He may have won, but at what cost? This is Sports Center. Hey, I'm Lucas Chalabre filling in for Marissa Roberto, and we have to start with a massive game from Paris that just finished. As Canada took on host nation France in the quarterfinals of the men's basketball tournament. And for Canada, the key coming into today's game would be how they deal with French phenom Victor Wembanyama, who has been on an absolute tear in these Olympics. This one started as bad as possible for the Canadians. They shot just 3 of 14 in the opening quarter, and turned it over 7 times. And we're down 13 after 1! Second quarter wasn't much better, as France took a 16 point lead into the half. But Canada would cut it to 6 in the 4th, led mostly by Shea Gilgis Alexander. He finished with a game high 27, and he really was their best player all tournament long. Canada once again couldn't get anything from Jamal Murray though. He finished with just 7 points on 3 of 13 shooting. And it was just that kind of tourney for him. And while Wemby didn't really fill it up offensively, he did have some epic highlights, especially in the form of blocks. Due to Viz restrictions, we can't quite show you, but we did recreate them. <laughs> that is a horrible feeling, and I can't imagine what it's like going against Wemby and Yama. His, like, where, where's the space for you to even get off a shot? Canada falls to France, 82-73. They're officially eliminated and will not have a chance to medal in men's basketball. Now the prize for winning this game is a matchup with the current FIBA world champions Germany, who beat Greece by 13 today to advance to the semis, led by a team high 18 from Franz Wagner. So as we bring up the bracket here, we've got a tasty semi with Germany against France on one side, and on the other side we've got Serbia, who had a massive comeback today against Australia, winning an OT. It was nuts! Jokic going on feels right though. I, as much as I love Patty Mills and Matt Delavadova, the the old guys just being relevant again, absolutely love to see it. It's nice that Jokic is going on. And they'll likely take on the Americans, who are currently playing Brazil right as we post this show. To the NFL now, and the Brandon Ayuk trade rumors appear to be heating up. At many points throughout yesterday and this weekend, it looked like Ayuk was traded, but Tuesday's here and he's still 49er. And while many mention the Steelers as a potential landing spot, according to Bay Area reporter Matt Mayoko, the Niners reportedly have the framework of a deal in place with the Patriots and Browns. And according to NFL Network's Tom Pelissero, teams reportedly have permission to talk to his agent about a new contract now. There certainly have been trade discussions surrounding Brandon Ayuk. In fact, certain specific other teams have been granted permission from the 49ers to speak with Ayuk's agent, Ryan Williams, and try to work out a contract that would have to be a part of any deal getting done. This willingness to listen to offers is some pretty big news, as for the longest time it felt like the Niners were holding out hope in reaching a new deal. But it really does feel like we're getting closer to an Ayuk trade. But even if a trade is agreed upon, Ayuk actually has the power to squash it because of his contract situation. Ayuk still has the ability to completely squash all of this by simply saying, I don't like the contract offers from the Browns or the Patriots and stay with the 49ers. The 49ers too could squash this by saying, we don't like the trade compensation from the Browns or the Patriots. But the point here is the conversations are extremely intense right now. They are ongoing and it does feel like, at least in this regard, we are moving towards some resolution when it comes to Brandon Ayuk and the 49ers. I would love him to stay with San Francisco because I think that offense is so great and dynamic with him in it and I just don't know how they replace a guy like him. I've got a soft spot for that team as far as like, I just love when an offense is good for so many consecutive years and I'd love to see Shanahan win one and I think Ayuk helps that. If he doesn't end up there though, I feel like all those spots just suck. I don't know, maybe Arizona? Him, Kyler, Marvin Harrison Jr., Michael Wilson, that's pretty good. <laughs> Watching the ascension of Connor Bedard has been a treat for hockey fans. And now we have another prospect in the pipeline of women's hockey, with possibly even more promise than Bedard. 16-year-old Nella Lapusanova has officially committed to the Wisconsin Badgers. And she brings a resume never before seen in women's hockey. A few years ago, at just 13 years old, she made her women's elite National League debut in Slovakia. And she recorded 40 points in just six games. That doesn't even make sense. If my math is correct, which it probably isn't, that's like over six points per game, what? And those nearly seven points a game came against women much older than her. And the following season, she managed to beat that mark, finishing with 49 points in just eight games, which included a 19 point performance in the final game of the season. That is the ultimate heat check, triggering this reaction from Jesse. There's been a lot of chatter about Connor Bedard over the years, but this right here is the next face of hockey. Unbelievable. 
And if you're thinking this is just some issue with the Slovakian Women's League, think again, because she's been tearing it up in the U16 Boys League as well. In 19 games played with the guys that year, she had 56 points, okay? And led the league in points per game. She isn't just a stat stuffer either, she's also got a ton of flash. As some of you might remember when she became the first player ever to score a Michigan at the U18 Women's Worlds, and even popping the goalie's bottle along the way. So, so smooth, so effortless, She's gonna be doing that at the University of Wisconsin now too. It's gonna be a joy to watch. And check out some of these other highlights. And she's been a human highlight reel throughout her time on the ice, making defenders look silly and showcasing a skill level of unbelievable proportions. So make sure you're paying attention to her at the University of Wisconsin, cause she's got goat potential and we wouldn't want you to miss it. And now we finish with a weird story from the world of music and college football. As Mr. Worldwide, aka Mr. International, but maybe mostly in this case, Mr. 305, the one and only Pitbull is purchasing the naming rights to FIU Stadium. This is nuts. Out of all of the stadiums in the 305, FIU is the one. I mean, I guess not a lot of them have naming rights probably up for grabs, but is he gonna just perform there? Like do a residency at FIU now for college kids? Pitbull's reportedly paying the school $1.2 million per year for the next five years to call the stadium, get this, Pitbull Stadium. The name change will require board approval, which is set to come today. And if all goes through, Pitbull Stadium will be the home of FIU's opener against Central Michigan on September 7th. I just think it's so boss that he gets to go in there and be like, we're calling this Pitbull Stadium for, if I'm not mistaken, the FIU Owls? Dogs and Owls now. Pitbull Stadium. It's a boss move by Pitbull. I love it. That stadium is going to be the most used stadium in the new college football game. That's all for today. Jesse will be filling in tomorrow. Have a great day.